Hey guys, and welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary, and if you've been here, you may notice that things look a little different. And that's because renovations in The Fish Room have been kicked into high gear. We've spent the past week breaking down tanks, taking out racks, building new racks, moving aquariums, and it's only going to continue. So make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell on if you want to see all of the changes that are coming. Now today we're going to focus on the build of this new rack and moving the 75 gallon South American community of nanofish. Um, but we've also moved the Hillstream Aquarium and the rebuild and rebirth of that tank is going to be coming very soon. So let's go ahead and take a look at the process of actually physically trying to put a really large rack in my basement fish room. Let's get started. So one of the unique obstacles of trying to redo my fish room is that anything over seven feet won't fit down the fish room stairs. And what's that meant? what that means is that anything over that we have to build down here, which is certainly not ideal with a room full of fish. Um, so what we did, or what we, my husband did, is from the designs that we came up with together, he built the top shelf and the bottom shelf of the new rack for the 150 and the 75s. Um, then built the legs and we painted it in its entirety and then he'll, we brought it down here and he'll grind off the paint in the spots that needs to well because it's not particularly safe to spray paint in our basement but we're going to have to do the best we can otherwise it wouldn't be possible to have the larger shelf down here unless it was built in a modular unit. My concern with building a modular unit or a two section stand for the 150 is that is a big tank with a lot of water and I, even the slightest imperfection could cause it to have issues with its seams. So instead we get to improvise. We've covered the tanks with fish with uh, blackout curtains. We weren't really sure if welding flash would be an issue for fish, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous, but you know, it's not like you can tell the fish to turn their heads. And even during the grinding and welding process here, which he's using uh, TIG welding, um, we have exhaust fans set up out of the fish room. So TIG welding utilizes argon. And what Chris just explained to me is that argon purges the oxygen away from where the weld is occurring so the weld doesn't get contaminated. But the thing that's really nice about being able to TIG weld down here is it, since it's an inert gas, there's no real risk of significant fumes uh, that could be of detriment. Now, I will tell you, it's kind of aromatic down here simply because the paint being burnt a little bit. But there's not a whole lot we can do about this. Uh, just kind of do the best we can with the circumstances we have. My fish room is my fish room, and it is where it is in our house, and there's not much else we can do. So as Chris is doing this, uh, we're going him and my friend Biggs is here from Canada and I are helping make sure that everything's really square as Chris tacks around the contact points of the two pieces because as metal heats it can warp so it's really important that we make sure it's good and square at every joint so that over the length of the stand it doesn't tweak, warp, or bend. Um, so he's just using these what are, what are those even called? Triangle? Squares. Squares. They're called squares even though they're triangle. <laughs> yeah, so we're using these squares just to make sure that there's not a twist over the length of the stand or the leg. Here we have the original plans that Chris and I drew up for my entire fish room system, which as you can see, after 10 plus years, they're very well loved, but they're also a great guideline when we're coming up with new stands. Um, since the 75 gallons that I'm going to be putting and the 150 are essentially the same front to back dimension, we could utilize a lot of the stands, but then we had to think about things like 
clearance, working clearance into the lower level since they will be the same front to back. So we had to add an additional foot of working space. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to put any aquascaping materials or even nets into the aquarium easily to work with fish. So what we're doing here is the shelf for the 75s that Chris made has to be fit a certain distance from the top. Um, but right now, just measuring and fitting then clamping that lower shelf to be welded in place. So after tack welding all of the components, Chris will go in and fill in the welds and finish them off. Ooh, that's a pretty one! So one of the things I was most excited about was figuring out if my stand contributed at all to the bursting of that 75 and it's absolutely perfect. So we're going to take the 75 outside. You can see there's no cracks and do a partial fill and see where it's leaking and see if it's just a bad seam. If so, that's it's really sad because this was a relatively new aquarium and it should have been more than trustworthy. Found where the tank failed. So another thing that has to be done as we're moving tanks out is to readdress the air situation because since there's only going to be two aquariums here I don't need all these drop downs of PVC but I'm going to have to run them on the other side of the fish room. All of this is just slip fit, so we're gonna pop them apart, cap them off, and reroute it.
Yeah, we'll do the rest. Yeah, we can follow there. Let's do it. Just get it on the rails. So the current state of affairs is my corner filters in a bucket, my hill stream fish are in a bucket with a bubbler. This area has to be addressed. Um, we ran into a small snag with the 150 so we want to place a board with cork underneath it. There's just a few areas that are not 100% flush despite it measuring level and everything and so we're going to put um, some plywood that's has cork cut to fit and is spray adhered down to it so i'm going to have to drain the 75 again to move out of the way to do some more welding um, so stay tuned for part two which will be the journey of moving and setting up the 150 asian hill stream